Hello. I can see you've been dreaming about traveling again, haven't you? So have we. Let's talk about our tour to Cape Cod in June. You know, Cape Cod seems to be one of those places where people continue to go back to time and again, especially in the summer months. I was trying to decide just what it is about the region that draws everyone in. I think part of it is just the ever-changing natural beauty with miles of white sand beaches, sand dunes, and the national seashore. But then there's a big contrast with miles of craggy, rocky shoreline with waves crashing to shore. Of course, there's just a huge amount of history that dates clear back to the 17th century, and there's plenty to do at Plymouth Plantation. Although, for myself, I love watching the whales, and the many lighthouses are a definite draw. Does this lighthouse look just a little bit familiar? If so, I know that you like the Cape Cod potato chips and popcorn because this is the one that's on their bags. Oh, and did I mention the lobster dinner? Well, no matter what the draw is, this is your opportunity to experience Cape Cod at its finest this June 21st through 30th and with us at Burlington Trailways. You can decide for yourself but we do want you to know there are only a few seats left. We will meet you with our luxury motor coach, professional tour driver, and onboard tour host at the available departure location of your choice. And then we're off to Middlebury, Indiana. Did you know that Middlebury is right in the heart of Indiana's Amish country? Even though our coaches are spacious with lots of leg room, leather seats, restroom, galley kitchen, and more, we still make some rest and refresh breaks and a lunch opportunity along the way, and we stop every two and a half hours or so just to let you move about. We arrive in Middlebury at the Essen House Inn and Conference Center for our overnight stay. Dinner this evening is on your own at the Das Dutchman. It's located right next door to the inn. They're not only known for being the largest restaurant in Indiana, but also for their great Amish style meals. Oh, and be sure to save room for dessert because they are definitely known for their pies. Hopefully the sun will be shining and you can take some time for a stroll to work off that pie around the inn's property. There are great things to find in the village shops if you want to do a bit of shopping or browsing, but be sure to check out their portion of the quilt garden that's located along the Heritage Trail. Each host site has its own intricate patterns, many even being original designs, and they all have their own story and are completely designed with blooming flowers. End your evening with a wonderful stay at the inn with each room set up to feel almost like your bedroom at home. There is even a large living area outside many of the rooms. It's complete with sofas, recliners, games, and more in a communal space. You know, kind of like your family room. From Middlebury, we're traveling to Batavia, New York. Even though you'll have a wonderful breakfast at the end before we leave this morning, we can't be in Amish country and not stop at the Rise and Roll Bakery for some of their cinnamon caramel donuts to take on the road with us. Perhaps you might pick up a few other goodies too, and some jars of jam. We make a stop at the Cracker Barrel where you can choose from the menu with your included gift card. Or maybe just spend it in the country store who needs to eat? Regardless, we overnight at Batavia Downs Casino and Track. Here you'll receive $50 in free play to use at the casino this evening if you wish. Let's hope Lady Luck treats you all well. From Batavia, and hopefully with a few extra bucks in our pockets, we are off to Chicopee, Massachusetts. But first, we stop at one of the many amazing villages nestled right in the middle of the Berkshires in Massachusetts, Stockbridge. And I'll bet you'll recognize Stockbridge too. It's because of the many Norman Rockwell paintings it's been in, and Norman has used many of its citizens as his models too. If you're familiar with his Stockbridge Main Street at Christmas painting, you'll feel as if you stepped right into it, but in the summer. Main Street still looks the same as it did back then. It has many quaint, cute shops, places to have lunch, and of course, the very famous Red Lion Inn. Well, except the cars. They're a lot more modern looking these days, not like those in the painting. 
You'll have time for lunch and a bit of time for some exploration too, but make sure you hit the Red Lion Inn. Not familiar with the Red Lion Inn? Well, let me tell you a bit about it. It's been in operation since the late 18th century and has this really wide front porch with welcoming rocking chairs just waiting for you. And although they look really inviting, keep going, there's lots to see in Stockbridge. First founded as a market around 1773, it soon became a tavern and an inn under the crest of a red lion waving a green tail. That's how it got its name. It's thought that the red lion symbolized the British crown and the green tail sympathy for American independence. Its lobby is nothing like a normal hotel lobby. It's more like your great grandma's living room, complete with antiques such as the collection of over 200 teapots scattered throughout the inn and like at Grandma's, there's an overflowing dish of gumdrops. Maybe you'll want to have lunch at the tavern portion of the inn today. On our last visit, I became acquainted with Norman. He's their feline lobby ambassador. It seemed that he usually hung out in the side parlor. He was just people watching. He likes to soak up the sun. Be sure and keep an eye out for him. Well, we can't be in Stockbridge and not stop at the famed Norman Rockwell Museum. Started in 1969 at the Corner House in Stockbridge, it moved to this 36-acre complex in 1993. Here you will find all of the covers of the Saturday Evening Post and the world's largest collection of original Rockwell work, including 998 original paintings, drawings, and so much more. There's a great gift shop too. His studio is located next door that you can visit as well and you'll find his original art materials, library, furnishings, and many of his own personal items. We continue on towards Cape Cod. Once we arrive, we have lots to see and do. Here are some of the main highlights while we are in the Cape Cod region. We've had groups go to witness the harvesting of the cranberries on past tours, just like the Ocean Spray commercials. But this time, we'll be visiting the largest cranberry operation in the world right at the height of blossom season. You'll get to see them up close, and there's also a cranberry expert that will get on board the coach, and they'll be able to give us details and answer your questions. Massachusetts is the second largest producer of cranberries with 13,250 acres, with the state of Wisconsin having the largest region in the U.S. and in the world. The location we are visiting has 2,000 acres of bogs, and all of this pollination is done naturally by bees. They fly bees in for the pollination time, and then they collect them back up and send them on to another place to pollinate other fruits. Did you know it takes two and a half hives of bees per acre to pollinate? You did the math, didn't you? I know you did. I bet you also are going to Google how many bees are in an average hive now too, aren't you? Welcome to Hyannis. Did you know that Hyannis is actually one of, and the largest, of seven villages that make up the town of Barnstable, Massachusetts? It's also very well known as being the location of the Kennedy compound. While it cannot be visited, we will take you past one of the most famous houses in America. It gained notoriety when John F. Kennedy used this home as a base for his successful presidential campaign in 1960, and it became then known as the Summer White House. We also visit Hyannis Fort and the John F. Kennedy Memorial which very rightly overlooks Lewis Bay, where President Kennedy often sailed throughout his life. You will see an inscription around the reflecting pool of a quote of President Kennedy. I believe it is important that this country sail and not lie still in the harbor. This was from his report on the state of the national economy in 1962. This memorial was commissioned by the citizens of Barnstable and was dedicated on July 8th, 1966. Located near the John F. Kennedy Memorial is the Korean War Memorial. The armistice signed on July 27, 1953 formally ended the war in Korea, which began on June 25, 1950. That's when North Korea invaded South Korea. 
More than 36,000 American soldiers died in the war, and nearly 7,800 remain unaccounted for, according to the Pentagon. This memorial was dedicated in 2000. It honors, along with the many others, the 34 young men from Cape Cod who never came home. We view St. Francis Xavier Church. This was the summer parish for President Kennedy and his family. Here they attended Sunday Mass with the President and his family in the second pew with Secret Service agents in the first and third pews flanking them. It's also here in 1986 that Eunice Kennedy Shriver's daughter, Maria, married Arnold Schwarzenegger. We will travel along Old Kings Highway, also known as Historic Route 6A on the northern bay side of Cape Cod. We wind our way through some of the oldest villages in America, including Sandwich, Barnstable, Yarmouth, Dennis, and more. Many of the homes and churches you will see along the way are listed on the National Register of Historic Places. It's also one of America's most iconic byways and comprises the largest contiguous historic district in the United States. It also runs approximately 62 miles. As beautiful as it is in the summer with the tree-shaded route, it's really absolutely gorgeous in the fall with the many colorful leaves. We also visit the Cape Cod National Seashore. At the Salt Pond Visitor Center, you'll find a comprehensive museum, a well-stocked bookstore, and an indoor theater with orientation films. But what I loved is the breathtaking views of Nauset Marsh and the Atlantic Ocean. The National Seashore is made up of 40 miles of pristine sandy beach, marshes, and ponds. As we drive along some of the National Seashore, you will see a lighthouse that I know you recognize, the Nauset Lighthouse. Located in Eastham, it's been guarding the shores of Cape Cod since 1877 and appearing on potato chip bags since 1996. Keep an eye out, you might spot some seals. And if you're a flower lover, I bet you spot those wild zephyr roses that are growing along the upper banks of the seashore. While in Eastham, you'll also see the Eastham Windmill. This windmill was built in Plymouth in about 1680 and then moved in 1793 to where the Salt Pond Visitor Center is now. It was moved again in 1808 to where it sits now on the green in the center of town. It is the oldest and last working grist mill on the Cape. You'll find yourself now at the extreme tip of Cape Cod. It's the end of Route 6. It's also known as Land's End or Provincetown. It's actually here that the Pilgrims landed before they decided to settle across the bay in Plymouth. And then we go whale watching. We set out with a naturalist on board to Cape Cod Bay and Stellwagen Bank. It's a marine sanctuary and one of the primary feeding grounds for several species of whale. It's truly exciting and exhilarating to see some of the most graceful mammals in the world and think you're just within feet of them. You might see them open mouth feeding or maybe even breaching. Just be sure to have your camera and video along with you. These here were some of my personal videos. And if staying on dry land is more your style, how about a sound dune tour in a comfortable SUV instead? Roll through the Peaked Hill Bars Historic District Sand Dunes. Catch sight of Pilgrim Lake nestled among the dunes and the famed artist Dune Shacks. Knowledgeable tour guides will share the history and the ecology of these beautiful and unique dunes that have inspired so many fine artists and writers. You'll get to take a photo stop where you can capture a shot of the dunes rising and falling like waves toward the ocean. We catch the morning ferry to the island of Martha's Vineyard to board a motor coach for a sightseeing island tour. We pass through Vineyard Haven, a beautiful working harbor village in the town of Tisbury. Visit Egerton for some free time to shop and to have some lunch. From Egerton to Oak Bluffs, you'll see miles of inviting beaches. Have some time to do some exploring in Oak Bluffs. There's lots to see and do there. The gingerbread cottages are iconic and a definite can't-miss National Historic Landmark attraction. With their delicate trim, picket fences, and wee size, 
they have the look of storybook gingerbread houses, which is exactly how they got their name. There is also the Flying Horses Carousel. It's the oldest platform carousel in all of America, and it even has an honest-to-goodness brass ring to have the chance to grab. Want to give it a try? Circuit Avenue, you usually will find bustling with people. This colorful downtown streets packed with restaurants, bars, ice cream, coffee shops, clothing stores, and fun boutiques to check out. Soon, we'll be saying goodbye to Martha's Vineyard as we head back on the late afternoon ferry. We take a sightseeing tour of Plymouth, Massachusetts. As one of the country's first settlements founded in 1620, Plymouth is well known for its historical value. And it's where the Mayflower came ashore 400 years ago, bringing with it English pilgrims who helped found the nation. We stop at the National Monument to the Forefathers. It's thought to be the largest solid granite monument in the United States. This 81 foot tall granite statue was built to honor the passengers of the Mayflower, and she stands facing the harbor welcoming those who come by water. Get your picture taken with the Plymouth Rock in Pilgrim Memorial State Park. This simple glacial erratic boulder has become a world famous symbol representing something different to each person who looks at it. Although there is no historical evidence to confirm Plymouth Rock as the Pilgrim's actual stepping stone to the New World, the boulder was identified at this spot in 1741, 121 years after the arrival of the Mayflower. View the Mayflower II, a replica of the 17th century ship Mayflower, celebrated for transporting the pilgrims to the New World in 1620. This replica was built in Devon, England during 1955 to 1956 in a collaboration between Englishman Warwick Charlton and Plymouth Plantation. We'll take a cruise on lobster tails in the afternoon. Harvesting lobsters from the sea has always been an important part of New England's culture. On this calm water cruise, you'll get a hands-on approach to see how lobsters are harvested. In fact, it's so hands-on, you can roll up your sleeves and help haul in those lobster traps. But careful there, you might get mistaken for the Gorton's fishermen. Once the traps are hauled in, everyone will be able to check out the lobsters, crabs, and other species of marine life that live in Plymouth Harbor. You might also see moon sails, sea stars, and learn why some lobsters are blue. But it's not what's for dinner tonight. These will all be released back into the sea. We also visit the 17th century English village of Plymouth Plantation. And trust me, you'll think you've been transported back in time to the 17th century here. The people you meet are costume role players portraying actual residents of Plymouth Colony. And try as hard as you might, they do not break character. They've adopted the names, the viewpoints, and life histories of the people who lived and worked in the colony. You can ask them about religious beliefs, education, and child rearing, their relations with native people, gardens, cooking, or whatever interests you from that time period. As you wander about on your own, you may walk in on the pilgrims as they're eating dinner, listen to their lively conversation in the street, or you can even jump in with some hands-on activities too. If you look closely, you might be able to spot some of the museum guides. They will speak to you from a modern today perspective and can give you additional background information about the 1600s. Also at the plantation is Plymouth Grist Mill. It's just a short walk from the waterfront and the Mayflower too. After more than a decade of laboriously grinding corn by hand in wooden mortars, the colony authorized the construction of a water-powered corn grinding mill on Town Brook in 1636. Don't you bet that was sure a welcomed addition? The mill is a reproduction of the 1636 mill and was completed in 1970, but many of the stones, parts, and the stone furniture are from the early 1800s and they were salvaged from a mill near Philadelphia. Oh, and did I mention? We have a traditional Thanksgiving dinner here this evening before we leave. Who's ready for some pumpkin pie? Sadly, our time in Cape Cod is drawn to an end, 
and it's time to think about returning back home to the Midwest. But it's okay. There is even more to see and do on the way home. As we begin our return trip back home, we make a stop at the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum in Cooperstown, New York. You'll find that great moments from history come alive when you step into the museum with a thick sense of nostalgia that is driven by your own memories. Baseball is more than a game. It's America's story. And for so many, it's a part of their own story. Personally, I'm not a true baseball fan, but I must tell you that this museum will interest the non-baseball fan just as well as I quickly learned. But for those true blue baseball lovers, well, this is like a dream come true. There is so much to absorb. Plaques, stats, equipment donned by the greatest American players, as well as important figures that many have now forgotten. You'll see uniforms worn on ancient fields and pieces of ballparks long faded from communities across the country. Remember, there's no crying in baseball. We head on and stop in Jamestown, New York at the National Comedy Center. Based on the vision of Jamestown native, Lucille Ball, for her hometown to become a destination for comedy, it showcases comedy's great minds and unique voices. Trust me, we can all use a bit of humor, especially these days. But the truly unique twist to this museum is you can tailor your experience to your own style of humor. Everyone's sense of humor is a bit different from others around you. Here, there's something for everyone. Take a stop in the stand-up lounge and listen to some of your favorite stand-ups and maybe some you didn't expect to enjoy. You can even have your own set and do stand-up karaoke of some of your favorite comedian's acts. I know this sounds silly, but you know how everyone has their own unique laugh? It's truly fun to just stand back and listen to the different laughter in this place. Regardless, I'm sure you'll find an even more fun laughing group that exits this museum and gets back on the motor coach, and probably with your sides aching from the laughter. Can you not wait to go with us? Now's the time to make your reservation as time is running out. Give us a call at 319-753-2864, extension 162, and we'll get you set to go on this great tour of Cape Cod and so much more. For an online brochure and a day-by-day -day itinerary, check out our website at trailwaystravel.com or call and request one.